To celebrate the release of Death Stranding, in this video we'll be looking at every Hideo Kojima game other than Metal Gear. Hideo Kojima originated as a developer for mainly two platforms, the MSX and the NEC series. The NEC PCs were known for RPGs and adventure games, as well as so-called visual novels. Kojima's first non-Metal Gear game as head writer slash designer was Snatcher. <laughs> Snatcher was developed for the NEC PC 8801 and also ported onto the MSX. In the early 90s, with the first wave of CD-ROM game consoles, Snatcher would be remade, not unlike the many HD remakes and re-releases we see today. Snatcher was an adventure game with amazing open-endedness. While most in the genre focused on individual puzzles, Snatcher was focusing on the wider world. In the near-future neon dystopia of Neo Kobe, Japan, the player is tasked with tracking down a mysterious new menace named Snatchers. These bioroids combined elements from Invasion of the Body Snatchers and the Terminator. They were a hidden and crafty enemy. Finding them required you to delve deep into the seedy underground of Neo Kobe. Spanning a single night, Snatcher takes the player across the entire cityscape. From the tower-like building of Junker HQ as its axis, to the lurid nightlife scene in hotspots like Joy Division and Outer Heaven, all the way to abandoned factories, apartments, and hospitals on the edge of town. Combined with the considerable amount of optional content and relative gameplay non-linearity for its time, we might even call Snatcher a very early attempt at a so-called open-world game. Before getting remade on CD-ROM, Snatcher would ironically be demade as SD or Super Deformed Snatcher on the MSX, a project also helmed by Kojima. SD Snatcher changed the genre to turn-based RPG and story overhauls it introduced, like a long-awaited Act 3, would stay part of Snatcher permanently as part of the remakes on CD. Snatcher was so groundbreaking, many of Kojima's ideas for it were flatly rejected. He wanted to have the floppy disks fill the room with the smell of blood if they got hot enough. He wanted to put a heat-activated secret message on the floppy disks themselves. Even the ideas that were implemented pushed the hardware to its limit. Difficulties imposed by the limited memory constraints halted development at one point, and it was during this break that members of the Snatcher development team began working on the second major non-Metal Gear Hideo Kojima game, Police Knots. Allegedly, Kojima's first official project as a game designer had been on Yume Taireku Adventure. The MSX game had featured elements devised by Kojima, reportedly, like multiple endings, secret items, and metagames that heightened replayability. Police Knots would include all these features and all those seen in Snatcher combined. Created first for the NEC CD-ROM platform, the PC-98021, Police Knots would also see more than one form. The initial PC-98 version's pixel art would be translated into cell animation, 
thanks to collaboration with AIC, Anime International Company. But this would also be thanks to a new member of the team, future MGS art director Yoji Shinkawa. <laughs> Police Knots, visually as well as interactively, would embody the very hard sci-fi, low-life Hollywood fusion later seen in 1998's Metal Gear Solid. Police Knots was a follow-up to Snatcher in every way possible. It employed a point-and-click interface more like other adventure games, making it more complex than Snatcher. But just like in Snatcher, observation in Police Knots blurred the line between environmental immersion and puzzle solving. Also like Snatcher, Police Knots would take place across an entire cityscape, in its case somewhat of a literal world. Aboard the first civilian space colony in history, Beyond Coast, in Police Knots, players are yet again on an investigation. This time around, you played as Jonathan Ingram, an astronaut policeman or police knot who's trying to track down a missing person. After spending 25 years in cryogenic sleep, lost in space. Police Knots was an attempt to hybridize manga, adventure games, action games, and visual novel elements alongside movies and anime. Billed as interactive cinema, Police Knots, put roughly, was the elevator pitch of Lethal Weapon meets 2001 A Space Odyssey. The game would continue the CD remake of Snatcher's use of voice acting and light gun compatible arcade shooting. But Police Knots would also provide the framework for a trilogy of young adult dating sims in the late 90s called Tokimeki Memorial Drama Series. Kojima would produce two and serve as the quote unquote executive director for Tokimemo 3, Tabidachi no Uta. The Tokimemo drama trilogy simply reapplied the formal template of Police Knots to a dating sim. There was even the same roughly 60 to 40% division between adventure slash visual novel elements and action. In Volume 1, for example, there was an elaborate mechanic just for kicking soccer balls, replete with in-game physics and 3D depth. That's pretty advanced stuff for a visual novel. The second volume, for example, dropped soccer to include other mechanics like guitar playing, knitting, and swimming. For Volume 3 of the series, the one Kojima executive directed, the story would completely diverge relative to which of the two available girls that you picked. This sort of mechanic would be reprised in Metal Gear Solid 1998. As work on Tokimemo neared completion, Kojima and his studio, KCE Japan, were assigned with porting the rhythm game Beat Mania onto consoles. From the PS1 to the PS2 and onto handhelds, Kojima's team produced several such ports. They added special options like different reverb settings and functions like highly reactive vibration. Next, Kojima would produce two different series. On PS2, Zone of the Enders. On Nintendo's handhelds, the Bokutai games. Zone was a mech action sci-fi game that would borrow heavily from the visuals of Police Knots. Boktai would produce four entries. The last one would be known in the West as Lunar Nights. These games combine the aesthetic and even some of the mechanics from different games like Castlevania and The Legend of Zelda. The unique solar sensor that came built in during the series' Game Boy Advance days also ensured a gameplay experience like no other. The Boktai games were a new kind of fusion between gothic horror, sci-fi, and spaghetti, or in this case, noodle westerns. The first game's protagonist, for example, is named Django after a classic Italian western. Lunar Nights would take things across worlds, treating space as a literal frontier, a new wild west which harkened back to police knots. And now, of course, the world will finally get to play the first post-MGS Kojima game, 2019's Death Stranding.